Hello and welcome to this Simulator Spotlight presentation. My name is Jason Tranter and in this demonstration I'll show you the iTeach Averaging Simulator. Now, iTeach Averaging can do all kinds of things. So let's just have a look at it. Firstly, from a simple point of view, what we have are a number of samples of, of vibration, time waveform, uh, long time waveforms and the ability to analyze them. Now first thing I should explain what we're seeing here. This is uh, 30 seconds of vibration. So if we just were to press play we would listen to all 30 seconds of this machine vibrating away. And it's interesting enough even to just look at this ordinary machine vibration, how the vibration can change over time. But when the vibration analyzer creates a spectrum and performs averaging, it just grabs a chunk at a time. It's the easiest way to look at it. It grabs a chunk and that chunk is based on the resolution setting which we'll explore in just a minute. Um, it grabs a chunk, performs the windowing on that and then creates the spectrum. And then if you asked for example for just four averages it's going to grab another chunk of time waveform, window it, create the spectrum and average it with the first one and do it again and do it again. So if you ask for only four averages, it's going to go through that process four times. Now it might grab just one contiguous block of vibration and it's going to do that uh, with each piece. So to start off, here's just a, a simple thing this program can do. If I press play, not only will we see it go through that process, um, but we can hear it too. So, if you saw, if you noticed that as the as I press play, we could hear the vibration, but the little red block was showing the chunk of time waveform it used each time to produce the spectrum that we see down here. Now, what you've seen so far is the very simplest capabilities of this uh, simulator. In fact, one other thing I could quickly show you is that if we wanted to see what was inside this block here, we can show that in greater detail. So that's all great, but with a lot of our simulators there's often a lot more hidden behind the scenes. Now with all of these controls here we can do an amazing number of things. We can control whether you're looking at the waveform and the spectrum, just the spectrum or everything. So here's our 30 seconds of time waveform. This is the chunk that the analyzer is going to use to create the spectrum. There's the chunk, the block of time expanded. That's the block of time turned into, uh, uh, sorry, that's the windowed block of time. That's the spectrum or the FFT of this block and that's the final averaged uh, spectrum. So if we play it now, you can see that process occurring. This is always the real time or the, the, the spectrum of this block here and this block here becomes averaged. So we can decide just what we want to show as part of this demonstration. Now we can zoom in on parts of the waveform to, uh, sorry, parts of the spectrum to see uh, what's actually happening during the averaging process. We can demonstrate linear RMS and peak hold averaging. We can do statistical averaging where we keep the sigma um, uh, like a standard deviation value with so many sigma on top. We can change the resolution. So watch this. If I go to 1600 lines, right now we're on 800 lines and we are using 2048 samples to create this spectrum. The spectrum has 800 lines and this blue box here actually represents 2048 samples of the time waveform. Now, if I go to 1600, 1600 lines, you see my F max didn't change, so my resolution has just be, my spectrum has just become uh, higher resolution. But in order to do it, I now use 4096 samples. So it takes a longer block of time. Uh, sampling at the same rate because we didn't change the F max. If you notice as I change it, the uh, the frequency range hasn't changed. Um, so the sample rate, the, num the amount of time between each sample hasn't changed. Um, so by increasing the resolution, 
it just takes twice the amount of time. And if we go to 3200 lines, that time doubles again. We've just now got a very high resolution spectrum, same F max, um, but more time. But if we then change the F max and we go half, well now we have to uh, sample for a long time because we're zooming in, we've, we're looking at a lower block, so we need to go uh, higher and higher still. So very low F max of 125 hertz in this case at 3200 lines you can see how much time is required in order to create a 3200 line spectrum up to just 125 hertz. Or if we back off on the F max and back off on the resolution, you can see that it takes a much shorter block of time to create the lower resolution spectrum with the higher F max. But we can do all kinds of things. You know, if uh, we can see some interesting waveforms. Here we had some uh, beating going on. And in fact, there's a better uh, example of a beat. Watch this one. See this peak here? Now, this is a very interesting point. When you go out and measure vibration on a machine, you just measure it, it goes through its averages, and you look at the one spectrum. Now, just watch this peak. If we watch each individual spectrum, watch what happens. See that bouncing up and down? We see this um, averaging process as we go from one block where that signal happens, to, well, the, the two signals are adding together and creating that. If I switch through um, block by block by block, see how it just keeps going up and down, up and down. So now it's down low. The two signals are cancelling each other out. So when you do an FFT, if you happen to only get say four averages, you don't know whether you catch four um, when that peak is at its greatest or four when the peak is at, at its lowest point. We've got another movie describing that in more detail. But anyway, that's just one of the things that we can do with this simulator. There's lots we can do. We've got some good data in here. For example, here, if we look at these peaks in here and we zoom in on those, if I just if we just watch these live, notice that these didn't bounce around at all, whereas these bounce around quite a lot. Just watch it again. So if I turn on linear averaging, now what we're going to see is the, the different spectra in grey and the final average in orange. So if we watch that again. If I just reset that count back and play it. So the grey shows me each individual spectrum and the orange is the final spectrum that you would record. With these peaks here, you can only just see a little bit of grey, which means that each peak for each uh, block of time that we created uh, is the same uh, same amplitude each time. In this case, the peaks actually moved up and down due to modulation, and we can see that the final average is this averaged value in here. If we didn't average enough, again, we could have quite different amplitudes, which could become confusing. In another block of time, I could talk about this stuff forever. I'll just reset that back again and turn off zoom. We've got this peak in here, which if we just play it, The interesting thing is that the frequency of this peak actually varies a little bit. So let's let's just zoom in on just that peak. But because the speed is varying just slightly, um, you can see the amplitude of the peak doesn't change very much, and that's probably as much to do with windowing as anything. But when we average all those together, we end up with a broad peak with a lower amplitude. Just watch that again. Let me just reset that. Anyway, so it's great for demonstrating how 
averaging and, and the different types of averaging work. It's great for demonstrating how the lines of resolution and F max affect what you're measuring. But it's great that we can bring all that back to real life situations of beating and modulation and speed variation and, and all kinds of weird things that you can see in time waveforms. Things you'd never think were there. You know, here's just normal vibration, but every now and again these, these surges come through and we can see what happens in the spectrum uh, when that happens. Anyway, that's probably enough of a discussion on this iTeach averaging simulator. I hope you enjoyed it um, and thanks very much for taking the time to view this presentation.